Dear fellow coders, welcome to One Little Coder. This is going to be a very short video about Google Tensor chip that is supposed to come with Pixel 6. Every year, Google releases a new phone, Pixel phone, and this year there is going to be something very special in it. And what is special in it? And especially, what is Google Tensor chip? might do for machine learning engineers or machine learning enthusiasts is what I'm going to cover in this particular video. So Pixel 6 is Google's flagship phone that is going to come soon and Google is doing something special with Pixel 6 this year is that Google has got their own chip which is their own SOC the, the SOC that they have designed custom designed for their phones and first time it's going to make a debut on uh, Pixel 6. And what does it mean? I think all of us probably would have seen Apple Silicon and what is the potential Apple Silicon has got in almost every field. Uh, you name it like video editing, faster processing, better battery power management. Apple Silicon is winning in all these areas and then you can see that Google Pixel chip or Tensor chip is going to bring a lot more things to our smartphone. But one important thing that Google has highlighted in this blog post where they have announced about Google Tensor chip is machine learning. So if you know, already Google does a lot of machine learning on every Pixel phone. So for example, the examples that they have given is HDR+, Night Sight, Artificial Intelligence for creating uh, computer better uh, images using computational photography. They've got an inbuilt recorder as well, which transcribes as you speak. And they've got a lot of other ML features packed with Pixel phone. Now, what having their own chip like Tensor chip means is that it's going to be extremely fast. The reason it's going to be extremely fast is because Tensor chip primarily designed with machine learning and artificial intelligence in focus is going to help Google do a lot of things on device than cloud. That means it's going to be faster and a lot faster. So I want to show you a very quick example that uh, probably you would have seen in a viral video in the past, which is uh, a small comparison between an iPhone and Google Pixel phone, the past Google Pixel phone, not the recent one, about how the transcribing looks like. So let me just play it. Here's what I found. And you will be able to see how quickly this So you can see that the speed in which Google transcribes something and then the speed in which uh, C, uh, sorry, um, iPhone uh, transcribes something, there is a huge difference. So you know already that Google is leading in this space, especially in terms of machine learning and artificial intelligence, whether it is their computational photography, whether this is their speech recognition. And you might have also noticed that while I'm already talking about my phone, it's already, you know, uh, recognizing what I said about Google and then it's activating Google, like Google on my phone. So the point that I'm trying to make is machine learning and artificial intelligence are going to be one of the focus areas of Pixel. But why do I have to make this video? I'm not a smartphone. Um, I don't cover smartphones. So wh why am I making this? The reason I'm making this video is because one thing a lot of data scientists and machine learning engineers often miss or often do not enter, including myself, is the areas where you can deploy your models on edge devices. A lot of us do not enter that area, like either because we don't find it useful or the ecosystem is not heavy, the computation power is not very great. So for a lot of variety of reasons, we actually do not enter that area. But now, because Google is going to debut Google Tensor chip on Pixel 6 phones, I think this is a very important moment for all of us to explore the ways we can deploy our models on edge devices. So Apple has already got Core ML kit, which is a nice kit for you to design something and then publish it as an iOS, which is powered by machine learning and artificial intelligence. But a lot of us like normal, let's say data scientists, machine learning engineers are not doing that because of a variety of reasons that I already told. So what I want to emphasize in this video is that because now Google has got a chip or SOC of their own, which is going to be ML and AI focus. I think this is important for all of us to, this is, this is like the pivotal moment for all of us to already get started with uh, the journey because probably after this debuts, a lot of people might get into it. So if you are interested in edge devices, machine learning and artificial intelligence. I think this is your best time to get started and your next pixel could be the platform where a lot of applications could have very good computation power and then machine learning could be of very good use there. So how can you get started with edge computing? That's a, that's a very good question, right? So two places I would ask you to start with this. First of all, I would ask you to start with TensorFlow. So what is TensorFlow? TensorFlow Oh, did I say TensorFlow? Tensor Lite, sorry. 
Tensor Light is nothing but Google's Tensor Flow for mobile and edge devices. So especially if you want to develop something for Android, if you want to uh, develop something for iOS as well, you can actually use Tensor Tensor Light and then deploy it. You have a couple of examples. There is uh, there is very good detailed documentation and then uh, like you can see image classification, post estimation and all the different kinds of problems like natural language processing, question and answering, all these kind of different problems and you have already examples for it on how you can use it on either Android or also on iOS. So this is the first place. Probably if you are interested in this new era of smartphone computing, a smartphone machine learning, smart, I should say smartphone on device machine learning, you should try it here. So this is the first place, TensorLite. And the second place I would also recommend you to look into is tensorflow.js. In one of my videos, a lot of people had asked me, Hey, I like this model, but how can I make it into a Chrome extension or how can I make it into something that anybody can use on a Google Chrome or like Firefox, any browser. And my answer to that is usually you should look into tensorflow.js and as much as I answer that question, I myself in the guilty side of not looking into tensorflow.js much and I'm going to change that. So you would probably see a lot of tensorflow.js videos in the future in this channel so if you have not subscribed please subscribe that's my plug okay so first look at tensor light second look at tensorflow.js the advantage with tensorflow.js is that you don't have to create anything platform dependent it could be platform independent which means like you can de design something for a browser and that browser could be there anywhere so because now your latest phones like especially like uh, apple silicon phones Apple has not launched any phone with Apple Silicon for that matter, but their Bionic chip is also their own um, custom SoC. So it could be either Apple phone or it could be your Pixel phone. So these phones have enormous potential and uh, because their new processors, the new processors that are going to power this phone are going to be highly memory efficient, sorry, power efficient and also going to help you in uh, help you in doing machine learning and artificial intelligence. I think it's uh, it's a very important moment for all of us to look into TensorLite and TensorFlow.js. So these two are based on TensorFlow. There are a couple of other frameworks that you should definitely look at, but my uh, my focus is uh, into TensorLite and uh, TensorFlow.js primarily because, um, because of this announcement with respect to Google Tensor chip. So you can develop something and then try to deploy it on uh, uh, like Pixel phones, which means like you are going to leverage the cutting edge uh, computation power on a smartphone to run your machine learning model and that could mean something because probably you could uh, you could you could launch a very successful um, um, product or app that somebody could uh, probably start using it so there are a lot of examples that you would see when you when you go to tensor light uh, again like i said there are like a lot of examples that you would see and then you can simply copy paste these example then start using it that's one thing and then the second thing that i wanted to say is the latest pixel phone pixel 6 is going to come this fall which also means that uh the computation on on device computation is getting heated the the ecosystem with apple silicon and google pixel which means a lot of things that we actually do currently are focused only on computers like traditional computers i should say um, but we do not focus more on um, mobile devices edge devices i think that should probably change and uh, uh, also this is like a message for myself so i'm going to focus more on uh, tensor light and tensorflow.js uh, areas so if you are interested in that please let me know in the comment section so it would uh, encourage me to make more such videos so to quickly summarize Google is launching new Pixel phone and this Pixel phone is going to have a very special feature which is Google's own custom built SOC chip which is called Tensor chip. It has nothing to do with TensorFlow. Google is I think traveling this traveling with this Tensor name. They have a Tensor processing unit TPU. So it's like their own branding but the point that uh, we have to remember is Google is already way ahead in terms of speech recognition, computation photography on device and that is going to go into an entirely new universe with the new chip and then if you also want to build machine learning applications that has to that that can run on these devices please check out tensorflow light and tensorflow.js thank you so much for listening to me stay safe